prequels I thought were almost an impossible task. How do you tell the story that we've all grown up with imagining who Anakin Skywalker was? You saw so many things in Phantom Menace that you just imagined like the Jedi Council and none of it really was what I had expected. But I know now that that's just like how creative George is. Like he just sees it differently and he's laying it down. And I love the lightsaber fight with Darth Maul, not because it's a lightsaber fight, but because George is so good at crafting why that fight's important mm -hmm. every time. Like, you know, the Obi-Wan Darth Vader fight isn't like the most wonderfully staged necessarily combat that you're ever gonna see, but there's so much at stake. It's so meaningful when Obi-Wan dies that we all feel like Luke. In Phantom Menace, you're watching these two Jedi in their prime fight this evil villain. Maul couldn't be more obviously the villain. He's designed to look evil and he is evil and he just expresses that from his face all the way out to the type of lights every fights with what's at stake is really how anakin's going to turn out because qui-gon is different than the rest of the jedi and you get that in the movie and qui-gon is fighting because he knows he's the father that anakin needs because qui-gon hasn't given up on the fact that jedi are supposed to actually care and and love and that that's not a bad thing the rest of the jedi are so detached and they've become so political that they've really lost their way. And Yoda starts to see that in the second film. But Qui-Gon is ahead of them all. And that's why he's not part of the council. So he's fighting for Anakin. And that's why it's the duel of the fates. It's the fate of this child. And depending on how this fight goes, Anakin is gonna, his life's gonna be dramatically different. So Qui-Gon loses, of course. So the father figure, because he knew what it meant to take this kid away from his mother when he had an attachment, and he's left with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan trains Anakin at first out of a promise he makes to Qui-Gon, not because he cares about him. When they get Anakin, they find him on Tatooine, he says, why do I feel like we've found another useless life form? He's comparing Anakin to Jar Jar. Excuse me. And he's saying, this is a waste of our time. Why are we doing this? Why do you see importance in these creatures like Jar Jar Binks and this 10-year-old boy? This is useless. So he's a brother to Anakin eventually, but he's not a father figure. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a failing for Anakin. He doesn't have the, the family that he needs. He loses his mother in the next film. He fails on this promise that he made, mother, I will come back and save you. So he's left completely vulnerable. And Star Wars ultimately is about family. So that moment in that movie, which a lot of people I think diminish into just, oh, just a cool lightsaber fight, but it's, it's everything that the entire three films of the prequels hangs on, is that one particular fight. And Maul serves his purpose, and at that point died before George may bring him back, but he died. And that's showing you again how the Emperor is completely self-serving. He doesn't care, he's just a tool that he's using people, and now he's gonna use this child. That follows all the way through to the line which terrified me as a kid when the Emperor tells Luke, you like your father are now mine. And the idea when I was a little kid watching that movie of some evil person possessing my father, making him do things or making him be evil was, was terrifying. That was like a, a thought that was horrible. Also, it's amazing when you watch Return of the Jedi that Luke has never done anything that I would call it like he's a bad character. He has like a tendency to be dark. And a lot of people wanted Anakin. Oh, he should have been darker as a character. It's not true at all. I, I believe Luke would turn to the dark side in Return of the Jedi. I believe that was on the table. I believe that he would kill the Emperor. And because of the way George Ranger did the story, I knew that was the wrong thing to do. When he's saying, you know, you want your weapon, you know, strike me down, I'm defenseless. He wants him to give into his anger. He wants him to give in his hate. And, and the fear, the structure that George has laid out in all the movies it, is coming to fruition now. And the only thing that's going to save him is not his connection to the Force. It's not the powers he's learned. It's not all these things that are an advantage to him. That's gotten him to the table. But what saves Luke is his ability to look at all that and look at his father and say, no, I'm going to throw away this weapon. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let that go and be selfless. And, and he says, you know, I am a Jedi like my father before me. But what he's really saying, and why we connect, I connect so powerfully to is like, he's saying, I love my father and there's nothing you can do that's gonna change that.
and the, the Emperor can't understand that connection. Why wouldn't you take someone from the power of the galaxy? Why won't you take this? And Anakin then in that moment has to decide to be the father that he's never had. He has to give up all the power of the galaxy and save his son. And, and that's the selfless act that he does in return for his son. And that's what saves him in turn. So the, the son said, the father, father said, son, and it works out perfectly. And I draw that line all the way from Phantom Menace to Jedi. That's the story of Star Wars. Everything so when he pops else, the helmet, you're saying when he pops the helmet off in that moment was part of the yeah, it's, faded arc. It's all part of the faded arc. It's all part of like why it works and why we care. It's not about X-Wings. It's not about all these, the things we decorate Star Wars in. It's important. It's part of the genius of it. But we soulfully react like we don't just want an action movie we want to feel uplifted and, and star wars is an adventure that makes you feel good you know it makes makes me feel like wow i, I want to be a part of that so that's what that's what i always go back to with star wars is this selfless act and this family dynamic which is so important to george so important to the foundation of star wars that's in us and what i like about it is it's, it is really saying there is a lot of hope out there that we fundamentally want to be good people that we can all be driven to do terrible things but that we can persevere uh, through selfless action so george has this hopeful story and it's something that he's reiterated most times i've seen him uh you know after we've been making things uh, without him is remember to make these stories hopeful remember to give that to kids because they really need it. And so that's, that's just something to keep in mind.